restroom are just right around over there. So if you need to use the restroom, you definitely can. And then in case of emergencies, fire, etc., we have an emergency exit right here so we can just pop out this door and we'll be safe. So no worries about that. We have a fire truck right here. Yeah, I know, I know, exactly. <laughs> we can have fire brigades And I just want to make a special thank you to Marion Hansen for putting this all together today. He is the reason that we have the Irwin Kurtzman class of 
basketball tournament, which is very, very huge. Shelby County had a local county tournament every year, but the state basketball tournament was an exciting one to win. Um, and then in 1952, the paving of Highway 268 was completed. And then in 1952, the Irwin High School girls basketball team won the Shelby County tournament, which was held yearly. And a mastodon head was found in a local farmer's river bank in 1955, Thomas Holloway. And so he was able to find that in his river bank, which is very, very impressive. And there is a picture of that there, so you can see the size of that, which I mean, I can't imagine the size of the animal that it was attached to. Um, and then the new high school building, which is the consolidated Irwin and Kirkman High School building. That was completed and dedicated in 1958. And that high school is now on the list of national, the national register of historic places. So I'm sure you're all a little familiar with that. <laughs> And then Kirkman was established in 1880, and the town was named after Marshall Monroe Kirkman, who was an officer of the Chicago Northwestern Railroad Company that ran right past Kirkman. And so um, Albert Keep, does anyone remember what town he plotted? Yes, exactly. He also plotted Kirkman on October 22nd, 1880. And then on March 1st, 1881, the Kirkman Post Office was established. And the first postmaster was James French, and it was attached to his confectionery store, so his sweet shop. And with that, then um, the postmaster was changed over, but they had big seats to make it through lots of snow, to make sure everyone had their post, the postal service all done. So it, they've done a lot, and reading about it was very interesting. Um, and then in 1883, the first school was built in Kirkman, and it was divided into two different departments with two teachers. And the Kirkman School has very different, a very different setup than most schools in Iowa. And so we'll be able to dive into that a little bit more later too. Um, in October of 1890, discussion was held in Kirkman about the town becoming Shelby County's new county seat. The original county seat was held in Shelbyville, but um, after discussion, Harlan is now the county seat but um, there was a lot of discussion about it being Kirkman as well. Um, and then the city of Kirkman was officially incorporated in June 29th of 1892. And then in 1894, Kirkman schools had 60 students enrolled and 30 of those students were at the elementary school, which broken down in 1894, the city of Kirkman had 192 citizens. So 31% of those citizens were actually enrolled in the school. So that's a very large majority. And I think that's so fascinating that we were, it was such a young town. Um, and then Kirkman's 4th of July celebrations were notorious. So in 1907, the 4th of July celebration brought in at least 2,000 people. So those people came in from Omaha on train, wagon, anything and everything. They would come into Kirkman for the fireworks, the dancing, and just the fun that entailed with that. Um, and then in January of January 21st of 1914, the new fully equipped school was dedicated. And that new school had five teachers. And that actually was when Kirkman became the Kirkman Consolidated School. So instead of having country schools, the Kirkman School actually was just one big school for all of the surrounding 
like country schools and districts. So they were all consolidated, and that was in 1914. And then on October 24th in 1921, a fire spread in Kirkman, resulting in five businesses being completely destroyed. And so the fire was finally discovered in the hardware store, and luckily Harlan, the Harlan Fire Department was able to come and put it out, but the smoke was so much that the Kirkman Fire Department got lost along the way because they couldn't find their way. So luckily nothing more was destroyed besides the five businesses, but it was quite a big fire. And then in 1930, the miniature golf course opened in Kirkman. Yes, yes, a miniature golf course. It must not have been um, as, as successful as I had hoped it would have been. With all of the shocked faces that I've seen in the audience. Um, and in 1939, the Kirkman School basketball team won the county tournament. Um, and then in 1943, the Kirkman High School students collected scrap iron for the war effort. Um, Victory Gardens were also very, very popular in Kirkman at this time. And the Kirkman Girl Scouts group actually collected old silk um, hose and pantyhose for the war effort as well. So there was a lot of... Um, yeah, just team building in Kirkman for the war, for World War II. Um, and so I know I haven't covered a complete history of everything that happened in Irwin and Kirkman. This is just kind of a flyover. Um, but then we're just going to dive into a little bit more of the school history, um, just for our school class of 1959. Um, and so in 1912, this is what the school bus looked in, like in Kirkman. So it was called a school rack. And so it would drive around to all of the different houses in Kirkman and pick up the kids because country schools were actually designed two miles apart from each other. So no students would have to walk more than two miles to school. So anyone who was walking to school would walk just two miles. But in Kirkman, unlike everywhere else in Shelby County, they actually had school buses, and they would all go to school then in Kirkman, and then they would be dropped off at home with these little school racks that they had. So that is so interesting to me, and the fact that we have a picture of it is very special as well. Um, and then in um, 1921, the Shelby County Atlas has a list of all of the different schools that are found, like country schools that are found in the township in Shelby County, but I have just pulled out the townships that Irwin and Kirkman are involved in. So all of the schools are highlighted, and when we are looking at Douglas Township, which is where Kirkman is found, you'll find that there are only two country schools. So I just have a lot of these different ones, so we can just pass them around, and you can see for yourself a little bit more um, of those, so I will just walk over here and you guys can have a view too. So you can see um, what those are like and with Douglas. There's only two that are highlighted, which is very interesting, but that's because of Kirkman's consolidated school that they have. Okay. And then in 1955, due to the size of both Irwin and Kirkman schools, they chose to consolidate after a vote was held in both communities. Um, and then in 1968, the state of Iowa passed legislation that re required all land to be connected to a K-12 school district. So that resulted in doing away with all of those country schools that we are also fond of today in 2016. So that is the reason that we don't have country schools today, because we are all going to those public K-12 or private K-12 schools as well. Um, and then in 1985, Irwin and Kirkman and Manila all consolidated into the IKM school district. 
that is all that I have. And it's a very brief and a very fast flyover. But I was hoping that we would have a few of our people from the Erwin Kirkman class of 1959 to get together and share just a few memories that you have because you were the first class to graduate after four years of high school going together um, or what it was like to ride the school buses back and forth or anything like that. I didn't know if anyone had a memory that they would want to share with us. Do you all know how many times did the merry-go-round at the Great at the playground got put on top of the fire? <laughs> the elementary school. Yeah. yeah. Put on top of the elementary. No, 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 on the water tower. Okay. Oh, well, oh. It, it was it was a really big thing every year. I don't know how they did it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> because my dad would be hired to go up when we lived in town to weld it to the ground.
I got free lunch until the week. Because otherwise I packed my lunch. My dad, my dad would, they didn't want to buy lunches. So I could have free lunches if I worked in the kitchen and peeled potatoes and got help with the good lunches. So they cooked the lunches in the church basement? That's right. They, they cooked it in the church basement. The church basement. Oh, they ate in the church basement. Right, because the church and the school were side by side. Mm -hmm. The gym was very small. Okay. And so we had to go to the church basement to have. Wow, that is so fun. See, these are things that aren't documented that you were sharing, and so I'm so glad. <laughs> I have a question. Is, is that barn, the one that used to sit right across the street from the old Kirkland school, where Ben Dixon used to keep these trucks in later? Is that the same barn? I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if anybody's been out to the Kirkman church recently, but we have a monument that stands back behind that's uh, a very nice monument that Rex Adams, now deceased, he put in a lot of work on that. And, uh, it stands where the school was, right. right? And he did many things to kind of bolster the Kirkman community. He was active in the community building, and uh, so you know, the Adams name was well known. Oh, how fun. I haven't made it out to the Kirkman Church yet to see that monument, but I'll make sure that the next time I'm out there, I'll stop by to see that, because that's so yeah. interesting. Don't we still have some of the school yes. holes. What kind of? I was going to say, you can ride the merry-go-round. Yeah, the merry-go-round. Yeah, how about you? Yeah. It's so great. Does anyone else have any memories that they want to share or anything else that they have questions about? Um, oh, yes. I have a question about the, <coughs> the new Irwin School. Yes. Which was built in 57. It was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You said it was on the National Historic Registry? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sure. 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 Johnny Croft, you don't. 
Put his tank wagon in. And wait yeah, I don't know. Yeah, All I remember yeah, is being in Johnny Cross gas station. Yeah. I wasn't too big. I was, I was placed up on top of some oil pans. <laughs> Well, he had a building, old building, and that could have been the old livery table that he used to keep his tank wagon in. Well, all I know is it, it, it was sort of a barn like structure uh, that was down here where the elevator is. Was the elevator got moved to Berwood, and it's, it's still there. That's for a lot of this link is fast. But that's Everybody interesting. It's interesting to listen to everyone's facts and memories. Yeah. Oh, yes. No, no. The person in the centennial community building has a large photo and it stems it originated from Darling Hansen postcard that she had in her, oh, she had many albums of Kirkman history, that type of thing. And I played a role, a little bit of a role in getting that picture blown up. Uh, Rex Adams came to me and he said, Judy, is there some way that this, you know, we've heard about the postcard and that it dates back. It's a picture of Main Street in Kirkman. Let's see, 1913, 1913 is when the uh, photo was taken and it was in a postcard that was no bigger than a postcard size. I said, Rex, I'll try my best. I took it to IV when they had their picture scanner and worked on that until I got two separate pictures. But from there, he took it down to Omaha and had a huge canvas photo. And the detail on that photo, you can see the handlebar mustaches on the men on the side of the, the you know, the, they weren't sidewalks, they were boardwalks back then. And the detail, you know, there were, the old automobiles, and there were horse-drawn uh, as well. But if anybody gets a chance to go to the Kirkman Centennial Building, you've got to walk up to that photo and look at the detail on that and how Kirkman looked. Because at one point, it was hard, it was bigger than Harlan. Mm -hmm. But the photo is blown up to about four feet by six feet. It's oh, huge. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's a mural. That's like really impressive that yeah. you're able to take it from such a small picture to Rex just felt like that needed to be done. Yeah. 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 Well, it's a community building. Right, okay. Yeah. But you could yeah, certainly find somebody to open it. But the fact that it was able to Sharon Sharon or uh Tina. She would be able to direct you to They also used to have outdoor movies down on on downtown on, on Kirkland also. Oh, and I also can remember at school we used to, a bunch of us used to slide down the fire escape and I remember one one Halloween that we our class kind of built our entertainment around going down that fire escape. That's so fun. Well I am so thankful that you all stopped by today and you hung with me with my fly by history. I didn't want it to feel like you were sitting back in school, so I wanted to make it hopefully a little bit fun. Um, but if you want, I'd love to, we'd love to walk you through the museum if you want a little tour or you want to see anything. Um, we are just really thankful that we took the time.
time today to come and learn a little bit, hopefully something new about Shelby County history and the history of Irwin and Kirkland. And I know that we've learned something new. Thank you for pointing that out about the. And so we'll make sure that we change that and we add in all of this new history that we've learned today into our records as well. So that way we can continue to have all of the um, legacies to continue. 